Hello again, I am Jim Bob, and welcome back to our Haas playthrough, and it's time to activate the alternate timeline. So, our last time we were out, we had a cracking finale at Abu Dhabi, uh, but we had some issues with that save file. It was a little bit... I don't want to say corrupted, but... I suppose that's kind of the best word for it. You know, we had... Um, pre-1.8 uh, patch uh, data on that file so car development was stronger than it should have been uh, some of the staff details were incorrect um, and I just I wanted to switch us over onto more accurate data so uh, what I did was I worked on a brand new Haas playthrough kept the original lineup of uh, Schumacher and uh, Magnussen and completed an entire season and then we are now picking up at the same point as the other season finished so we've just had our end of season board review uh, as you can see like we did on the other file uh, our target position was sixth and we finished third uh, we were a little bit more comfortable on this file than we were on the on the original file uh, scored a few more points than we did and you can see we also completed our long-term objective as well with eight podiums instead of the required six there you can see uh, our uh, best driver position was Magnussen finishing in fourth. Our team rating position has gone up from 410 to 552. That's a big jump, uh, mainly down to how well our driver and, uh, and team performed in their respective championships. Uh, so that is going to give us a nice little boost in appeal, I think, going forward. Uh, and there you can see uh, we have high confidence from the board so we have the obligatory 1.5 mil bonus so now it's time to end off this season and progress into the start of the next season we are going to do Bahrain uh, so we've got a bit of uh, a bit of work to do before we get there let's check our emails first of all uh, our pit crew has been uh, sent on uh, on winter break so uh, you can see our ratings are going to drop a fair bit there we're going to lose nine points off our front and rear jacks nine points off our tire changes 10 points off our car release and 10 points off our wing adjust that is now particularly pathetic 39 points out of 100 that is really bad uh, let's uh, keep them on tire changes for now uh, and then we'll start working on the front and jacks when we get this up to something a bit more competitive We also have the regulation changes, uh, and these are the same regulations, <laughs> ironically, as the, the season that we've uh, just abandoned. So minus 10% of everything uh, you can see there. Uh, no sporting regulation changes, no financial regulation changes. It's just uh, the, uh, the aero changes. So we are going to stick to normal points and uh, you know the same payouts. If we have a look through our calendar to see what's coming up, uh, we have uh, an upgrade to our wind tunnel facility going through pretty soon, uh, and one to our tour centre as well. Uh, we also have uh, a design centre upgrade going through, uh, some scouting being finished off, uh, a CFD upgrade going through, uh, and then we have the end of the season there with our last bit of research being finished off just there as well. I don't think we can get any more research in. Now you can see we've got the underfloor, side pod and rear wing, which will, those last two will finish on the final day of the season. Uh, let's take a look at our uh, contracts. Uh, we are going to be saying goodbye to Mick at the end of the season. Uh, we're going to be keeping Kevin and we are going to keep Logan on as a reserve driver for next season as well. He needs a little bit more work. Uh, you can see his pace stats are starting to look very nice indeed, uh, but his control rating is, is still pretty low. His smoothness rating means he's still going to eat his tyres too fast, so I need to get that up to a minimum of 60. I want to get his control up to about 75. Uh, I want to try and get his cornering up to at least 80. And then, if possible, I want to try and improve his adaptability a little bit over the season, uh, just in case you know, we get a wet race. It doesn't mean he's going to be completely flummoxed and, and fall right down the, uh, the order. Uh, Kevin has had a really strong season. Uh, we've improved his braking uh, a couple of points, so he's now a 90 on his braking. Got his cornering up to 85. 
uh, he's looking pretty good uh, I am going to start putting some points into his control rating uh, at this point onwards to try and just boost his control a little bit um, and when I get that up to maybe 75 then we'll probably start working on his reactions again maybe he's cornering we'll see and Mick's had a good season you know uh, all things considered got his breaking up uh, quite nicely improved his cornering a little bit uh, in terms of his uh, career, you can see uh, this season he finished 7th in the championship, had two podiums, 118 points. Uh, Magnussen, though, had a pretty stonking season. 4th uh, in the championship, four wins, all coming towards the end of the season, and eight podiums. So we'll quickly run through the results of the season so you can see what we did. Uh, so with Bahrain, the first race of the season... Uh, you can see it was 5th place and 14th place. We got a really nice good start at the race and were able to hang with the front runners uh, you know, for a little while before dropping off a little bit at the end uh, into Jeddah at Saudi Arabia. And it was 8th uh, and 9th, Mick actually finishing ahead of Kevin. Then we went to Melbourne. Uh, Magnuson finished 9th in the points again, Mick struggling, finishing in 16th. Then we went to uh, Imola, and a better result here. Both drivers in the points, and both drivers staying on the lead lap as well. Fifth and eighth in total. Uh, Miami was a good race for us. We finished fourth and sixth, both drivers in the points. Off to Barcelona we went next, and another strong result for the team. Fourth and seventh. Our new floor was really working at this point. Uh, and then Monaco came along. Uh, a decent result for Kevin, 6th, stayed on the lead lap, Mick 10th and uh, a lap down, but he did get that point. Uh, into Baku, we had a 3rd and a 5th with a new upgrade uh, for the car, made us nice and punchy. Then we went to Canada, 3rd and 7th, yeah, so another podium for Kevin. Then Silverstone. 5th and 8th, again getting some points but starting to drop back a little bit. Into Austria, 5th and 11th, we're starting to fall behind again a little bit in development compared to the rest of the grid. Onto France, it's 9th and 10th, just about uh, sneaking into the points with both drivers. And then we went to Hungary, 4th place for Mick Schumacher, a very strong result after um, a safety car came out thanks to uh, Magnussen's crash, managed to capitalise on that and uh, got him some strong points. And then Spa, the last big upgrade package of the season. There was a new underfloor, a new, f uh, new rear wing and I think, uh, I think new side pods as well. Uh, there were three parts basically that went on the car for this Grand Prix. And, uh, and it gave us some really good performance. As you can see, Kevin got his first win of the season and uh, no finish for Mick. He was uh, involved in a collision. On to Zandvoort. Another strong result for Kevin. Another win. Uh, a good result for Mick getting a podium. Then we went to Monza. Uh, it was second place for Magnussen. Ninth place for Mick. Just not quite being able to uh, keep pace with the front runners. Then we go to Singapore, strong result for Kevin again, another win, 7th place for Mick. Suzuka, we started to slip back in terms of development again, because we'd finished upgrading the car for the year. Uh, Kevin gets 5th and 7th for Mick. On to Kota, and it was 7th place for Magnussen, and another non-finish for Mick. Then Mexico, uh, second and third. Uh, we uh, managed to ride the DRS trains well and capitalised on a late safety car to uh, get us a, a very strong position there. And then Sao Paulo, fourth and eighth. Mick lapped. You can see the pace of the front runners there. Uh, everyone up to uh, up to and including Pierre Gasly in seventh was lapped. And then the final race of the season, it was another win for Kevin. 
Uh, again, capitalising on a safety car. Mick managed to bring it home in seventh. And that's how our drivers finished over the season. So, pretty good. Uh, some uh, some very strong results once we got those uh, really big upgrades in around Spa. That really kind of turned the season around and made the car very, very competitive indeed. But it's time for us to push on a bit now, get to the end of this season. We are going to be making some changes to our driver and staffing lineups. These are our current staff. Uh, Simone Resta is secured on a long-term contract. Aaron Melvin is going to get replaced at the end of the season. We're going to get a better aero guy in for next season. Uh, going to keep Pedro Matos. He is a, uh, a good young race engineer. Uh, he's uh, nice and cheap as well. And we're going to say goodbye to Ed Reagan. Uh, he has uh, done well, but he's he's not a great engineer. He's an okay engineer, and we need some someone a little bit better. So we'll we'll look at who's available on the market. Uh, in terms of driver changes, you can see car one will be vacant. We will not be renewing Mick Schumacher's contract, and those two drivers will be staying in the positions that they're in. Uh, in terms of our young driver. Uh, I did think about promoting Logan, but the driver I want to put in the car you know, as the reserve driver going forward is Jack Crawford. Now, he has now completed his uh, two seasons in F3 and F2, but he still hasn't turned 18, and he won't turn 18 until partway through next season, so we can't sign him until he turns 18. So we'll take the the, uh, the opportunity to basically give Logan another full year of development, really get his stats up, and then put him in the car uh, for season three and sign Jack as our developmental driver for season three. There's our tour center upgrade. Let's bring in a little bit of extra cash on a weekly basis. Our new wind tunnel is ready. Going to drop in just in time for the start of uh, a new season's development. Uh, also, a CFD upgrade goes through just before the end of the season as well. And also the design centre. So there's just one upgrade left on this now. Uh, this gives us extra staffing, so it's now up to level 4. Uh, one more upgrade will unlock that final slot, but that is probably going to have to wait for the end of the season. 32 million is a lot for a team with a small budget. We are, however, going to hire some new engineers now that we have a slightly larger design centre. Go. Got some scouting back. Uh, I'm looking at trying to sign Fernando for a couple of seasons to replace Mick. So we've got a nice strong driver lineup. Our underfloor research project is now done. No time to try and research anything else because it's now the final day of the year. There's our rear wing research done, our side pod research is done. And we have to now sign a new driver as we have a vacant role and we cannot progress until we sort that out. So, we are going to approach Fernando Alonso and see if we can get him on a, on a good short term deal. His performance, as you can see, very good stats. Uh, not quite as good as Kevin in terms of braking. Uh, his reactions are better, though. His cornering is uh, slightly worse, but he's missed a consistency. His accuracy is very good. His control is phenomenal. Uh, his smoothness is very strong. Very good in the wet. Good at overtaking. Good at defending. He's, he's, you know, he's a, a very low development driver because he's at the end of his career, but he's a very strong overall package. So we are going to offer him a two-year contract. And we're going to start off with an offer of five million a season for two seasons. Uh, I'm going to give him a nice big signing-on bonus. 
and we're not going to offer him a race bonus because it's going to be expensive to do that. In fact, actually, before we go ahead, do I want to maybe renegotiate with Kevin? No. We're going to put uh, Alonso in. He's probably only going to drive one season for us, but you know he's not going to accept a one-season contract. Uh, so we will go with a two-year deal, and then we'll just have to buy him out at the end of the uh, uh, the end of the season, so we can put Logan in the car. So there we go, a five million starting offer with a starting bonus. We're going to go with a one million dollar starting bonus. Hey, doing, Trucker? So, let's offer him this contract, see if he takes it. He's happy with the car number, he's very happy to be the lead driver. Uh, he is okay with two seasons, he's okay with the salary, he's very happy with the bonus, but he's still declined the contract. So we're going to up the offer to 5.1 million. He still says no, so let's try 5.2 million. We have got a lot more flexibility in terms of how many times we can approach him because he's out of contract. He's not with a team right now. Uh, so we do get a lot more attempts. How you doing, Patkins? And there we go, he's accepted the offer. Uh, so this is only going to cost us $1 million because that's the signing on bonus. His wage just comes out of our monthly billing. So there we go, Fernando Alonso is now a Haas driver. I am going to look at renegotiating Kevin's deal. Uh, I want to try and get rid of his uh, race bonus. Um, although he's probably not going to accept that salary. Um, we'll give it a try. We'll see if we can renegotiate the deal. Uh, so let's go to renew contract. Uh, we're going to keep him in car two. We're going to keep him there for, let's see. Uh, next, we've got this season coming up. Uh, and then I want two seasons of Jack Crawford as an understudy. So we want three seasons on this deal. Uh, we're going to offer him five million. Actually, let's offer him the same as uh, Alonso. Let's offer him 5.2. Uh, we'll offer him a big lump sum bonus. And we'll remove the race target bonus from his contract. Let's offer him 900 grand as a signing on bonus and see whether he goes for this. Okay, he's happy with the car, he's happy with the uh, the length of contract, he's happy with the lump sum, but he doesn't like the wage, and he doesn't like the fact that we took his brace target bonus away. Uh, let's try offering him five and a half mil. And we'll up his lump sum bonus to one million. Still declined. I'm going to push him up to six million. And if he doesn't accept this, we'll leave him on his existing contract. Okay, he has declined that, so we're going to leave him on the existing contract. See, Logan is uh, on a long-term deal. We're not touching him. Uh, let's get his cornering up a bit more. There we go. Uh, snapping. Uh, we've got a point for Simone Resto. Let's make sure we apply that before we go into the start of the next season and start building the next car. Uh, chassis is his weakest stat. Side pods isn't amazing. 
let's take a quick look at the car performance, see if there are any specific areas that we really need to focus on. Engine cooling isn't great, we're going to need another brake upgrade, I think, if we're going to put more pace onto the car. Um, so maybe boost this cooling. Yeah, let's boost this cooling. Uh, oh, we, we can't boost this cooling. So I can either boost his side pods or uh, the suspension or the front wing if I want to have a cooling boost. Uh, I'm going to go with the side pods because our brakes are in much better shape cooling wise than our uh, engine. So we'll boost his side pod skill a little bit. Uh, we don't have a point for Aaron, but we're going to be getting rid of him now anyway. Uh, let's take a look and see who is available on the market. So Diego Tondi is available as a free agent. Now I'm not going to sign Diego Tondi as, as nice as it would be to have the best aero guy in the game. Uh, simply because we've got him on our Williams file. So I'd like to do something a little different. So uh, we're going to try and sign Jared Murphy. Uh, or Mr. Grumpy, as I like to call him, because he, he's just got that sour look on his face. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and propose a contract for Jared. Uh, we're going to offer him four seasons. Um, he is a low downforce specialist in terms of aero as well. Uh, so this will help uh, really give us some good, solid, low speed performance. Uh, I'm going to start at $3 million, because he is... Uh, a pretty high up in in the rate in the ratings and um, we're going to go for him a 10 percent starting bonus so three hundred thousand. there we go and uh, although he's not particularly happy with the salary he is happy enough with the length of the contract and the starting bonus that he will accept the deal so we have signed Mr. Grumpy, Jared Murphy, as our new head of aerodynamics. And there you can see his stats. Uh, very, very strong in low speed downforce. Uh, very good in drag reduction. Airflow management and, and sensitivity are pretty strong as well. Medium speed downforce, 81 is not bad. And then not the greatest, but not bad in high speed DRS and cooling as well. They are going to be, I think, across the board, a step up from Aaron. Uh, let's take a quick look at Aaron's stats as a comparison. And there you can see we have improved across the board uh, with, with the stats there. A six point gain in sensitivity, a, a six point gain in airflow management, uh, a nine point gain in drag reduction, uh, a 13 point gain in low speed downforce, a one point gain in medium speed downforce, a six point gain in high speed downforce, six points in DRS delta, and three points in cooling. So he will definitely help make the car stronger next season. So one last thing to do, and that is to try and sign a new engineer. Now we usually go for Josh because Josh is good, but I'm just seeing here, Javier Marcos Padros of Ferrari is out of contract. And so is Pierre Hamlin. Uh, I do like Pierre, he is a great young um, engineer. But again, we're using him on our Williams file, so let's try something a bit different. Let's see if we can poach a Ferrari engineer who's out of contract. <coughs> so, uh, let's propose a contract. Uh, we want to replace uh, Ed Reagan, so we want car two. Uh, we want him on, if we can get him, uh, I suppose a five-year deal. Uh, let's offer him a salary of $1 million and we'll offer him a starting bonus of 100000 okay he's happy with everything but the salary he's declined the contract offer so we'll increase that by another 100000 And now he's accepted the deal, so we've got him for five seasons on 1.1 mil a year with a 100k signing bonus. And it's only going to cost us less than 600,000 to sign him, um, you know, immediately. 
Excellent. We now have a very, very good engineer. Look at his uh, feedback score. 92. That's going to make setting up the car much, much quicker. Uh, very good pit crew management as well. Uh, if we do a comparison with Ed Reagan, who we've just said goodbye to. There you can see uh, the gains. We lose... Oh, that's the wrong engineer. That's Pedro. Uh, let's change Pedro to... There we go. Javier. And you can see a big, big improvement in feedback. 19 points better in feedback. <clears throat> uh, six points better in pit crew management. He's worse in communication, but that is the most meaningless stat in this game. It really is. Uh, it just determines how fast... He forms a bond with his driver. It doesn't really affect driver performance at all. It just affects morale. So it's yeah, it's a pointless, useless stat. I always ignore the communication stat and look purely at feedback and pit crew management. And a yeah, significant upgrade. Right. So we've applied our uh, staffing. We've got a, a point for Pedro here. Let's uh, put that on his feedback rating. Uh, we have got a new race engineer, a new head of aero. We've done our stats uh, boost for Simone Resta. We've got a new driver. Done all our stat boosting there. We've got all of our uh, research done. It's time for us to end the season. So the first thing we have to do is set our sponsor obligations for the year. Uh, merchandising is currently at 2,000 units. We want to massively increase that. So we're going to pay out a bigger payment at the beginning of the season, but get a bigger income per race. Uh, race day events, there's 20 of those. Car parts manufacturing is paused on the day of the race session. That's going to give us $673,000. We'll leave that as is. We can't reduce it. We can only increase it, and I don't really want to do that. Uh, factory events. Uh, car part manufacturing is paused for the day of the events. Uh, that is also a minimum of 20. We can't in, in, uh, decrease that. We'll leave it as it is. Race hospitality. Uh, the pit crew's performance will decrease on each day, uh, each race day that the team hosts sponsors in the pit. Uh, I do not want to increase that at all because our pit crew is not very good. So we're going to leave that one alone. Uh, driver appearances. Uh, one or both of your drivers must make media appearances throughout the season. This is great publicity for your sponsors, but drivers won't gain experience on the week of each appearance. <clears throat> at the moment, it's just selected for car one, which is Fernando. Um, I'm going to make that both drivers and we're going to do that for every Grand Prix of the season that's going to give us 13 million in, uh, in income it will have a slight knock on on Kevin um, which is a, yeah, a bit of a shame but um, it won't affect race day performance it's just a weekly gain so 200 points I'm, I'm happy with that and it's not going to affect, obviously, Logan. So we're going to go with that. Uh, and then our race weekend driver appearances. Uh, we're not going to affect Kevin on that one. We're just going to affect Fernando. Because Fernando's basically at the end of his career. He's not going to be gaining much experience anyway. But Kevin still can. We'll leave it at 10. Uh, 10 is enough, I think. And that'll bring in another $840,000. Race simulator event. I'm not touching that. Because I want to boost Logan as much as possible. So I don't want to decrease the benefits from that and then memorabilia um, it just pauses uh, the morale boost it gives which doesn't really make a difference it's a minuscule payout per event but we're going to max that out it's not much but it's an extra 157,000 so it all adds up and there we go that is our sponsor obligations confirmed how are you doing Anthony good to see you So there you see, we'll have a pre-season lump sum of 14 and a half mil, or just over 14 and a quarter mil, and we'll be getting four and a half mil per race from our sponsors. That's before we 
have incentives and guarantees on top. So our objectives for the season, finish sixth or above. Uh, that's as things stand at the moment. That might change. Uh, we'll have to see once the, uh, the car goes through its pre-season testing. It may get in improved. A uh, long-term objective is, again, score podiums on 25% of the races. There's our balance. You can see uh, sponsor funding, 14.3 mil, 14.4. We get a board payout of another 7.8 mil on top. Uh, we do have to pay out uh, 2.7 mil as an entry fee. So it's going to leave us with around 19.5 mil. Into our technical regulation changes, as you can see, we're getting hit. Uh, on everything every single part is getting a 10% reduction uh, across the board uh, so you know we have put in some research to try and counteract that uh, we have made some gains in some areas as you can see drag reduction we've actually lost out slightly but you look at uh, our airflow sensitivity we've made big gains there um, on the underfloor and then again you can see we've made some savings uh, and some losses through the research. Uh, cost cap stays the same, season price share is going to stay the same, uh, no change to the sporting reg, so points stay the same as well, uh, engine allocation, testing limits, all that stuff stays exactly as it was before. When it comes to our engine manufacturers, uh, we are currently using Ferrari power units. I am toying with the idea of maybe switching to Red Bull, but I'm looking at their reliability, um, their ERS reliability or durability is terrible, uh, their gearbox durability is pretty strong but the car is very fuel efficient. Uh, it's only a little bit of power loss um, from Ferrari to Red Bull um, but they do have a better power loss threshold uh, and their wear resistance is higher. I think I'm going to stick with the Ferrari engine. I think it just gives us a better all-round package than the Red Bull. It's, it is, the, you know, a bit more expensive, but I think it's worth it. So there we go. We are into the start of the season. We have 5.2 mil in the bank, which means we can start doing some work on the car straight away. Let's check our inbox. Uh, so we've got the start of a brand new ATR period at the start of the season. There's our allocation of hours. You can see finishing third gives us 38.4 hours across the season, 512 wind tunnel hours. That works out at 4.8 MAU hours per, per block and 64 uh, wind tunnel hours per block as well. Uh, there's a welcome email for our new engineer. Uh, we've got uh, the new rules and regs. Uh, an internal car report giving us a breakdown of where our car sits uh, in comparison to last season. So you can see improvements all across the board from last season's starting model, as you would expect. Uh, welcoming Jared Murphy. Uh, car development is now open. And let's take a look at the new grid lineup for this season. So no change at Ferrari and they have Charles Leclerc in car one, Sites in car two and Giovinazzi as their reserve driver. Red Bull also unchanged, Max Verstappen in car one, Perez in car two and Sebastian Buemi in car th in the reserve slot. For Haas, uh, a new driver lineup, we have Fernando Alonso in car one, Magnussen in car two, Logan remains the reserve driver. No change for Mercedes, they keep Lewis in car one, George in car two and Nick De Vries stays as the reserve. So we head to Alfa Romeo. Uh, they have Valtteri Bottas in car one, Sebastian Vettel in car two, and they still have Robert Kubica as their reserve driver. Alpine have gone with Pierre Gasly and Esteban Ocon as their lineup with Jack Doohan in reserve. Uh, Alfa Tauri have Alex Albon and Lance Stroll with Theo Porsche as their reserve driver. Uh, McLaren are unchanged with Ricardo and Norris. Ricardo going to the final year of his contract. Piastri is their reserve driver. Aston Martin has uh, Zhou Guan Yu and Mick Schumacher. Hulkenberg remains the reserve driver for Aston. And Williams has Yuki Tsunoda. Nicholas Latifi somehow still keeps his seat. And Richard Bashore is their reserve. Oh. 
Oh, I started advancing time by mistake there. I did not want to do that. <laughs> Whoops. Right. Uh, let's go to cars. We we're going to immediately start developing. Uh, so let's go to car development, new project, design, and we're going straight for a brand new floor upgrade. And we're going to put everything into the floor. There we go. Uh, we're going to improve full slider bars on drag reduction, low, medium and high speed. And we're going to reduce the slider on aero sensitivity just a little bit. So in terms of performance gains, we're going to get uh, boost to our speeds, both uh, standard and DRS, uh, improvements to our cornering and dirty air cornering. And it is going to potentially uh, make us third fastest with the best acceleration in terms of straight speed, potentially. Obviously, other teams will be developing as well. Uh, we're going to try and get that in uh, as quick as we can. Uh, 73 days uh, is before Bahrain, so we will do that. If I go five days, or five engineers, that goes one day before the Grand Prix weekend. We'll emergency manufacture the parts. There we go. That leaves me with a little bit of money left to do two quick parts. I'm going to start with um, a suspension upgrade and I'm going to optimize the cooling so we can try and make sure those brakes are in the best possible condition. Put five engineers on that with an intense build. That'll take 23 days. And then I'm going to do side pods, I think. And again, we're going to look at optimizing the cooling. And we can just about squeeze that in uh, financially as well. There we go. Now we can advance some time. And there's our first part ready, a brand new suspension. So let's take a look at that. That suspension is going to give us a nice little boost to our, both our speed and our brake cooling, uh, as well as obviously a little bit of cornering improvement as well. Uh, we're going to go ahead and manufacture uh, just one of those. Gonna wait a couple of days on that. Don't have the money yet to actually start work on another part yet. Anyway, so uh, we're going to uh, advance to the start of the next month. Uh, our scouts are not doing anything. Let's go to scouting. Let's see. We want to go to staff scouting. I want to start scouting all the engineers. So I've got full details of every engineer. So we may as well keep track of, of them because once we've got their full information, we've always got their full information. So you can see Ed Reagan, even though he's now gone to Alpha Towery, we still have a full breakdown of his contract details there. And uh, if we click on him, we'll be able to see his stats as well. So once you've scouted them, you have that information permanently unlocked. So we're going to do that for all the engineers um, and then we'll do it for all the other staff as well. We'll probably upgrade our staffing centre at some point this season just to get an extra scout on that to help out. Uh, do we have any points? Uh, Jared has a point. Uh, let's drop that into... Uh, let's drop that into drag reduction. Uh, is that my aim, brake cooling? Uh, it is uh, at the start of the season. I want to make the brakes as good as possible. It just reduces the, the number of lockups. And also, I think, it reduces the severity of some of the lockups as well. It helps just eliminate some of the mistakes. When you've got a very aggressive driver like Kevin, 
uh, in your lineup, it, you know, you want good brake cooling because they will push hard into each corner. And if the brakes aren't very good or the cooling isn't very good on your brakes, then it massively increases the chance of lockup. Uh, no point for Simone Resta, he's still a couple of weeks away yet. Uh, suspension is ready, we need to go to the next month before we can do anything. Uh, our factory facility has been upgraded, that will help. Uh, we can now work on three manufacturing projects and get that done slightly faster as well. And there we go, we're into February. We've got uh, an extra bit of cash now from our uh, from our board payment, we've got to back up to 5.6 mil. Uh, got a couple of points for Logan to spend. Let's put those into his cornering. There we go, he's coming along very nicely. He's gonna be a great little driver for us at the end of the season. Uh, we also have a point for Fernando already. Uh, was not expecting that. Uh, let's boost his braking. Kevin has a point as well. Uh, I'm going to put that into his control. Just to try and reduce his mistakes a little bit. Uh, do our other staff have points yet? No, they don't. Uh, so now we can go to uh, car development, uh, new projects, and manufacture that new suspension. Just going to build one of these on an emergency build just so I can get that put onto the car. There we go. And now I can design a new suspension based on the, the, the performance level of our car as it now stands. So let's go to. Uh, do I need another suspension? My brake cooling is already very good. Let's not bother with another suspension, actually. Let's go with, um, let's see, we've got 32 days to the next testing period. Let's go with a chassis. Uh, let's give ourselves a nice little chassis boost. This will also help with our cooling a little bit more as well. Uh, we want Five engineers on an intense build for that. We'll get that in 28 days, just in time for a new testing period. Uh, so, given that I'm not going to make another suspension, I probably shouldn't have done. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, we will do another one at some point, relatively soon. So I'm, I'll manufacture two more, so I've got one spare for the first couple of races. There we go. Um, advancing time again. Okay, our new side pods are ready. Uh, let's take a look at those. Uh, so they are going to give us uh, a nice improvement to our aero uh, engine cooling. Uh, I would like an extra one of those on top though if I can. So I'm going to design another improvement. Like that. Let's go five engineers in tents, 34 days. There we go. So we're going to go straight to another side pod design. Uh, let's uh, advance our inbox. Just uh, congratulating me on developing Logan there. Okay, suspension manufactured. We can now install that on both cars. There we go. That's our scouting done. Uh, let me have a quick look actually at staff and uh, facilities. Scouting department will cost 1.3 mil to upgrade and will take 35 days. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. 
should probably upgrade our team hub as well, but I don't want to spend any more money on that just yet. Uh, I want to wait till it's almost um, almost ticking down into the next condition block, because uh, then we can refurb it and upgrade it at the same time. We are going to have to refurb our race sim pretty quickly at some point. Uh, let's look at the helipad is now needed a refurb we want to get that done for the sponsors hospitality area I'm not bothered about that that can stay as is uh, there's our scouting uh, so let's start scouting the next set of drivers or the next set of engineers sorry we'll go down two at a time there we go uh, we have a new point for Simone Resta excellent let's uh, go ahead and allocate that I've just started a chassis <laughs> and I've just started a new side pods so let's put that onto something else we're gonna do a front wing and a rear wing soon so let's put that onto uh, rear wing uh, it's going to be a little while until... Oh, now Jared's going to get another point next week. Nice. Okay, that's our chassis upgrade done. There is a point for Jared. Uh, we are going to boost... Uh, drag reduction. I want to try and make the car nice and slippy in a straight line. Uh, pit crew are still on tyre changes. That's good. No points for our engineers. No points for our drivers yet. Uh, car part development. So, uh, what is the new part that we've just done? It was our chassis, wasn't it? Uh, we haven't got time to build another one before the start of the Grand Prix, so we are going to go ahead and manufacture uh, three of those. That'll give us two, uh, and then a, a spare will come just after that first Grand Prix. Hopefully we won't prang the car in... Uh, in the first weekend uh, and we can now work on a new part so uh, we are four days away from the next testing period so we're going to wait four more days before we start working on the next part welcome to the start of the 2023 season brand new season of formula one every fan knows that there's a host of action drama and pure adrenaline ahead of us this year last season saw a climactic victory for ferrari who secured the coveted constructors championship win with max taking the uh, the drivers championship this year absolutely anything can happen between roster changes heated rivalries and some brilliant minds creating the fastest cars on the planet it's sure to be a great season for formula one i agree board have high confidence in our leadership as team principal that's nice to see uh, that's just an email about our chassis which we've already started work on our helipads now refurbished testing results pre-season uh, we are currently third in top speed and acceleration first in low medium and high speed cornering fifth in drs top speed third in drs acceleration first in uh, dirty air low medium and high speed cornering first in brake cooling 17th in engine cooling but we are working on some new side bods to address our engine cooling issues and we now have a new atr period so let's go ahead and start designing a new rear wing i'm going to put all of our hours from this period into the rear wing We are going to increase everything. Just want to boost everything on the car for the first round of upgrades. So there we go, that'll give us uh, a small gains in speed, uh, cornering, uh, dirty air performance as well. Uh, we want uh, five engineers on an intense build 58 days until that's ready which will drop that in time for Miami very nice there we go 
Uh, we will also have our side pods ready in four days' time and are on the floor the day before the Bahrain Grand Prix. There we go, there is our side pods. So let's go ahead and start building those. Uh, I want three. Actually, no, I want two. And I want to start work on another side pod because our engine cooling is very weak. It's the weakest part of our car. Uh, so we are going to work on another side pod uh, improvements. Uh, again, we're going to optimize it for cooling. Uh, I'm not seeing a big improvement in that yet. So actually, let's hold off on that until we've got the part on the car. Uh, so instead, could work on maybe another suspension. We don't really need to improve our brake cooling yet. We could do a front wing. Could do another chassis. Looking for something that's not going to take too long. Uh, let's go with the front wing. Uh, so we've got nothing to, to drop onto this in terms of hours because we put them all into the rear wing. Uh, but we will um, get a rear uh, front wing which should hopefully come at the same time as the rear one. So we want five engineers, we want an intense approach, that's 58 days, uh, which should put it in time, yep, for Miami, excellent. So new wings, front and back, for the Miami Grand Prix. There we go. Uh, let's check our parts. Do we have enough parts across the board? Uh, we are working on the chassis, side pods, we just started building account suspensions underfloor yet to be uh, finished okay let's uh, let's kick on uh, up and coming driver Roman Staniak uh, he is looking interesting actually 19 years old 62 rated already he is definitely someone that is potentially worth keeping an eye on uh, we have uh, lack of suspension parts, we're working on that. There we go, there is our underfloor. We are going to emergency manufacture two of these. This is going to put us into a little bit of debt, uh, but we need the new underfloor. There we go, so let's um, go to side pods. Uh, uh, change the second one isn't built till tomorrow put that on the car there uh, the new underfloor put that on both cars just gonna hope we don't damage it in practice uh, chassis have I done the chassis change yet no I haven't so let's put the chassis on both cars there we go uh, let's move on one more day. There we go, it's the second side pod ready. Uh, so we can now put that onto the car. There we go, and we should now be running uh, the most up to date specs for our car. So, suspension number two. Well, let's do it this way. This is the quickest and easiest way to do it. If we go to the warehouse, uh, chassis, spec two both cars front wing spec one both cars side pod spec three both cars uh, rear wing spec one both cars underfloor spec two both cars uh, suspension spec two both cars there we go uh, so uh, how does our car look let's take a look we are third in top speed, first in acceleration, first in low, medium and high speed cornering, third in top speed and acceleration under DRS, first in low, medium and high dirty air cornering, uh, fifth in brake cooling, ninth in engine cooling. This car is looking very tasty indeed. How you doing Mr. Water? Clearing off the emails, it's time to go to race prep. 
Uh, actually, before we do anything else, let's check our staff. Uh, no points, no points. We have a new point for Javier Marcos Padros. Uh, we are going to improve his feedback rating. When I get that up to 95, I'll start focusing, I think, on his uh, pit management. Uh, let's look at our drivers. Uh, we have another point for Logan. Excellent stuff. He is coming along very nicely. Uh, performance targets. Reach Q2 is the incentive. Given how strong our car is looking and how good our driver lineup is, I think that's going to be a walk in the park. Qualifying position. We're going to go two in the top six. We've potentially got enough pace here to actually lock out the front row, but I'm going to err on the side of caution just for the first race. See exactly where we sit. Uh, both cars are going to make it to Q3. Uh, finish position, one in the top six is the incentive. We are going to go for the fastest lap. Quality streak, two in the top eight for two races. Uh, finish position streak, uh, two in the top six for three races. And off we go to the race weekend. Welcome to the archipelago of Formula One. Bahrain might have a small land footprint, but it's showing its big spirit right now in the grandstands. Either way, it's time for another fantastic weekend of Grand Prix racing. The Bahrain International Circuit is a challenging track, and the cars routinely have to brake from high gear to low to take the narrow turns. With the need for downhill braking, the risk of locking up is one drivers will need to manage. It's all about focus and balance to get victory here. At this early stage in the season, there are still plenty of opportunities for things to change. In this sport, there simply are no guarantees. The competition is on. So once again, we arrive in Bahrain for the Sakia circuit. Uh, it's perfect weather, as always. It never rains here. Um, but uh, we are going to put Logan in FP1 every single race. We are really going to push his development because next year is the year that he takes over the car one slot from Fernando. I haven't told Fernando I'm sacking him at the end of the year, so don't tell him. <laughs> uh, right, let's go to our car setup. Uh, we are going to go with uh, an 11 rear wing and see how we do. I'm going to use the same setup on both cars. Uh, 17 laps. Drop the pace down. Both cars fall within the tolerances, that's good. 17 laps. There we go, so into practice we go. And radio check when you can. Radio is good. So it's our first lap of uh, 2023. So we'll watch the whole lap. It's our shakedown of our brand new car. If you're wondering why our drivers keep jerking out the corners like that and going into uh, a flying position, it's because of their 
instruction to drive in clean air. That's why it looks a little bit jerky in their cornering movement. That combined with their instruction to stay off the kerbs, give them a wide berth, does have a significant impact on their uh, lap pace and their track positioning. Right, let's start speeding things up. and the Aston Martins even though we're at the slowest possible pace setting. No real surprise there. Magnussen is currently uh, faster than the Alfa Romeos, the Alfa Tauris, the Alpines, the McLarens. Sonoda goes in a bit faster. Of course this is all you know speculative. They're all running different fuel loads, different tyre compounds. It doesn't really mean anything but uh, Bottas Update is looking very quick. Uh, we have a 76% feedback on Magnussen's car. Not great. Wait for feedback from Logan. Look at that, we nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. See if we can extend him so he runs for the full half an hour. Actually, no, let's not do that. We need to run him for both stints. We want to get our car knowledge up as quick as we can because it's the start of a new season, so we'll let him come in at the end of his run. Unfortunately, the last team on the uh, on the pit lane. Right, what changes do we need to make? We need to go with an 11.5 on the rear wing. Uh, we need to change the roll bar, so we'll go. Let's go 6.4. Uh, let's bump the front wing up a bit. Uh, drop that down. To a uh, 3.2, and we'll drop that down as well to a 0.15. It's not enough of a change on traction. There we go. do that and see how that works so fresh tires and that car turned around maybe we just need to slap on fresh tires and, and that's it a little squirt of extra fuel So, Logan is back out and running again. And Magnuson is now about to rejoin him. There we go. So, the perfect start for Alonso. Uh, he's going to settle into the car for the very first time and it'd be set up perfectly for him.
That should be going like feedback from Kevin soon. There. Oh, we got, we can uh, take a look now. Right, watch this. Schumacher. There's Schumacher. They've gone wide. They won't be happy about that. Going a little bit offline there. I think we've had a car run wide. Yeah, Here's Sonoda's the replay. Having a wobble. Now let's look at this. The focus on Sonoda. They're way off the racing line there. That isn't good. Okay, so we've improved the car from 17-something to 90 percent That's a nice big step forward. Needs a little bit more tweaking, but we can get that done in the next session. Let's keep him out on track. get that uh, car park knowledge up to uh, at least 85% if we can. And then we go, it's the end of FP1. Bottas looking very quick. Look at that. Faster than the Red Bulls, faster than the Ferraris, faster than the Mercedes. Of course, it's, it's only practice, so uh, things can change and probably will change, but that's still a very impressive showing for Bottas there. Right, uh, into FP2. Alonso gets in the car. Let's go with hard tyres for both drivers. Alonso is going to do one long run of uh, 36 laps. Uh, Magnussen is going to do two 17 lap runs on hards. And let's tweak the car again. Okay, so cornering is wrong. We need to improve the cornering. Let's go let's go there see how that works Yuki had a good session doing that, only once doing a Yuki. Yeah, <laughs> it's not bad, was it? We know that Schumacher is going to be languishing at the back of the grid all season, given that he's gone to the worst, yeah, the worst car on the grid now. Um, a bit of a shame, but I did develop him as though I was keeping him knowing full well that I'd be replacing him, but wanted to develop him as though I would still be keeping him. So uh, we did improve his braking score. He should hopefully make less mistakes this season, uh, and hopefully that'll help him develop uh, as a better driver going forward. Maybe when his contract expires, we might see him going into a better team. But that's probably still three, three years away yet. I'll have to have a look, actually, at the end of the weekend and see... Um, what the terms of his contract are. See how much he's earning, how long his deal is. We've just had a car run wide. Let's take a closer look. Let's have a look here. This was the Aston Martin. Having a little wide moment now on the final turn. Okay, no change to the overall rating on Magnus's car. It's a little disappointing. It's 
still at 90%. Oh, they've run wide! Uh, Let's have a look. A wobble. Taking a look again. It involves Sebastian Vettel. They've taken that far too wide, and now they're paying the price. All right, so what do we need to do with Magnussen? Uh, traction now needs to change, so that's going to be a 7.3. I do have a couple of 7.3 setups. Uh, so I've got a 4, an 11.5, a 7.3, a 3.15, and a 0. I don't think that's going to work. Uh, I've got a 5, that's going to break the rear wing. Uh, Got a 4.5, 11.573, and a 0 0.05. That's not going to work. I'm going to have to pull that right in. Let me try that. some back outs on track. Look at the difference in pace between Sonoda and Latifi. I mean, Sonoda's not, you know, a great driver by any stretch of the imagination, but he's half a second faster than his teammate there. <laughs> oh, and as soon as I say that, Latifi immediately jumps forward and closes that gap down. Again, different tyre compounds, but we can expect to see Latifi struggling at the back of the grid all season, I think. Yeah, it's a yellow warning of rain affecting East Midlands between uh, midnight and midnight. Heavy rain leading to a small chance of flooding and disruption. So we've gained 2%. This car is becoming a little bit more fiddly to set up than I would like. I was hoping we would have had this nailed down by now. Okay, Alonso finishes his run. session is over. There's Magnuson pulling in as well. We've got our car park knowledge up to 58%. That means we've got a good chance of getting it up above 85. Uh, once we get track knowledge up and car setup knowledge, that will hopefully give us a, a full 15 out of 15 bonus. Welcome back to what is proving to be an exciting weekend of Formula One racing, with practice coming to a close today and qualifying set to follow. While many eyes may be drifting ahead to the big race, the teams and their drivers will be fully focused on the task at hand here today. Those who make the most of the free practice sessions will head into qualifying knowing that they've given it their all and done everything in their power to cement themselves a good strong position on the asphalt tomorrow. You're going to want to join us for this, folks. 
So fasten your seatbelts. I was trying to figure out what seemed wrong in that in that scene there. I mean, I mean, Fernando doesn't quite look like Fernando. He looks a bit more like a cross between Jean Lacy and Alan Prost, and the hair just looks ridiculous. Um, but the thing that I just cottoned on to is that for that cutscene there, they just use one standard character model. So unless that engineer's a midget, Fernando's about a foot taller than he should be. Uh, right, nothing is quite where it needs to be, but we can see where we need the cornering to be now. I'm going to give that a go, see how that works out. Hopefully that will be it. Yeah, some of the drivers, uh, their uh, digital representations look really good. Others, they look really wrong. <laughs> Kevin doesn't come across very well. Mick does. Mick looks really good. Hamilton looks really good. Um, Stroll looks a little bit weird. Um, yeah, just some of the drivers, they don't look quite right. Ocon looks brilliant. Um, it's just weird how some drivers look absolutely perfect and others just look a bit weird. Don't look right at all. And I've noticed with some drivers, uh, there's a particular camera angle when you're in the, the, the main home page, when you're choosing to either start a new career or load a save file. When they pan around, sometimes they look a little bit cross-eyed. <laughs> it looks a bit funny. Just He's spinning his head around slowly for a dramatic shot, and he's just got this little cross-eyed look on him. <laughs> right, uh, back to practice. Let's get the uh, medium tyres on, 17 lap run. Pace is set. Uh, medium tyres for El Plan. Uh, again, we're going to run him for a full session. We're going to go 37 laps and drop the pace down, and off we go. And radio tech. Radio is good. to do this in the last session. There we go. Uh, Alonso is behind good. There we go. And he's got the heavier fuel load. I'm kind of curious actually as to because we haven't done uh, a proper side-by-side -side comparison same fuel load same tires I'm kind of curious as to which of our two drivers is going to have the slight pace advantage here and they both have their strengths and weaknesses I think when it comes to a wet race the advantage is definitely going to be with Alonso someone spun out Kevin might have a little bit more raw pace. Certainly more aggressive than Alonso. Sounds like we've had a spin. Let's take a look at the replay. Right, watch this. There's Schumacher. Look at that! They've spun their car! Yeah, as good as we improved his braking, the brakes on the Aston are shockingly bad. Update when you can. Ninety-five <sighs> percent. It's uh, just I'm not. <laughs> it's not going to be easy on this, is it? We're going to have to fight for every last percentage point on this one.
so braking stability that's a toe change uh, hmm, which way do I go it's a 5% difference so I'm guessing I'm gonna need a double click rather than just one let's go with that let's see if that does the job Okay, so um, Kevin has got his track knowledge done. Uh, we're just trying to get the car park knowledge up, and that goes up faster when you've got two drivers on track than just one. Um, and of course, we're trying to get that setup nailed. Alonso's got his setup nailed. He's almost got his track knowledge maxed out, and again, we're trying to get that car park knowledge up. If we get it to 85% or higher, then that will give him a full 15 out of 15 bonus uh, and then it's going to be down to set up for Kevin I think as to whether he gets his full 15 Who's running wide there? Mr. Water needs to rewatch last night's stream for falling asleep. Yes, you do. You do need to rewatch the stream. Oh, did someone run wide there? Watch it many times. Boost those numbers. <laughs> Put it on every screen in every room. Ninety-seven percent with Kevin. Didn't quite get it right. Did I go too far? I'll have a look when we get back to the garage. Uh, did we get the track knowledge up high enough? The car park knowledge we did. So we get the full fifteen out of fifteen for Fernando. Fourteen out of fifteen because we didn't max out the setup for uh, for Kevin. Well, that's, uh, that's a pretty good start to the season. Alma's crash right at the death. We get to see a replay of that before we, uh, before we cut away. Come on, give me the replay, give me the replay. It's a collision! Let's see what happened there. Now just take a look at the McLaren. Is that Nick? Oh. You can clearly see the contact there. And that caused a lot of That's damage. That's clumsy. Was that Nick or was that Joe? It was Mick. Would watching on an Xbox One without being signed into YouTube count as a view? I think so, yeah. should do counts as a view whether whoever's watching is signed in or not as far as I know anyway um, right let's see if we can maybe tweak we did go a little bit too far so if we pull that back hopefully that will fix it um, it's time for the race. It's time to qualify for, for the race. Uh, no parts to change. Uh, setups are sorted, so let's go straight into quality. And radio check when you can. And now radio is good. See just what the pace is like between our two drivers. Uh, we're going to wait for a little bit of clear air before we send them out.
right, trying to find out where we can slide our guys in here. Let's go for it now. drivers. Magnusson getting past Ocon and Alonso getting stuck behind Sonoda. Um, so you can see that Magnusson goes pole by two and a half tenths of a second. Alonso a second off because he got held up behind Sonoda there. Um, I really hope I don't have to run him again. He should be well clear, I think. I think he's got enough enough in hand there. It's gonna be it's gonna be tight, but I'm I'm gambling that he's got enough in hand there. I mean we're looking Ocon's gonna move up. Um I would imagine. Vettel did move out of the drop zone, but it's still slower than Alonso. He might pip him if he puts on fresh tires. Which he has done. Um yeah, let's see. It's tricky trying to find just uh, a patch of free air mid session in Q1. Someone's run wide, and there we go. Yeah, Alonso has enough to go through. So, very good pace for Kevin Magnussen there. Very good pace indeed. We could be looking at a front row lockout here. Um, 96%. Huh. Okay, so it's not quite there, but it won't affect his bonus. It'll still be 14 out of 15. We're going to go with scrub tyres for the second session. And radio check when you can. Radio is good. end of the session. Let's we'll see if we can get out ahead of the, the track? ahead of the pack. I think someone's run wide. Too long. Well, I'll go at the back of the pack instead then. Which of our drivers has uh, has the pace advantage? Is it Kevin? Is it Fernando? Neither driver going purple in sector one, but we're on scrubs, so it's not surprising. Ooh, they both went purple in sector two. Alonso briefly, then Kevin beat him. Look at that. A one-two at the end of the session, just 34 thousandths of a second between them. This could be a cracking season in terms of the competition between our two drivers. We're not going to implement team orders and until we absolutely have to. 
We'll let them fight each other. Let's see which one of them has has it in them to go ahead and actually claim the win. And given that it's so close, we're actually going to watch the pole position lap as well. Okay, put a little bit of separation between us and the field. <coughs> we'll send Kevin out first this time. So, who will take pole position? Will it be Kevin Magnussen? Will it be Fernando Alonso? It's going to be one of those two, given how fast they've been all weekend. I don't think I actually got a pole position with the team last season. So this would potentially be the very first pole position for Haas. I can't remember if I got one at, uh, at Spa or not. Uh, Kevin goes purple in the first sector. He's slightly ahead of Fernando. Patkins is guessing the Lord of the Eyebrows. I think Kevin might just about take it. But, you know, it just might be that Kevin is slightly better suited to this particular circuit. It might change as the circuits go through. Kevin goes purple in sector two. He's still faster than Alonso. And there we go. Magnuson takes pole, Alonso second. 69 thousandths of a second between the two. Slightly bigger gap than uh, Q2. But uh, the pair of them comfortably ahead of the Ferraris. And the Red Bulls a little bit further back as well. Uh, Bottas gets seventh, uh, Hamilton eighth, Russell ninth, Gasly tenth. Uh, and then as we look further down, Alexander Albon eleventh in the Alpha Tauri, uh, Vettel twelfth, Ocon thirteenth. McLarens of Norris and Ricardo 14th and 15th, Stroll 16th, Sonoda 17th, Schumacher 18th, but with a three-place penalty, so he'll start from the back. Uh, then Joe Guan Yu, Nicholas Latifi, uh, and as I say, Schumacher will be starting from last. That is our driver lineup for the race. It's race day, and final preparations are underway. The big winners of qualifying were certainly has. Now it's on them to demonstrate that they can finish strongly in the race as well. This weekend, Red Bull displayed real promise during qualifying, but will they fulfill that potential by the time they reach the checkered flag? And the clouds today look very ominous, which means that teams may have to contend with rain at some point during the race. And there's going to be a lot for the teams to handle, so will the drivers and their cars be able to cope with the pressure? Let's find out right here at the Bahrain Grand Prix.
Okay. In terms of strategy, uh, we could go soft, medium, soft, but uh, I'm going to go medium, soft, soft as our starting strategy here. I want to start on durable tyres and then use the grip of the, uh, the soft rubber uh, later in the race. And we'll do that for both our drivers. There we go. Uh, and let's see how we get on with that. Uh, actually, that needs to change a little bit. There we go. Uh, in terms of uh, fuel, I'm going to take a lap of fuel out. Uh, I'm going to start them uh, aggressive on ERS and tyres. But this is going to be a season where we try and protect the engines where we can. So we will be running at reduced pace uh, where we can get away with it. Just to protect the, uh, the life of the engines a bit more. So we can get away without having to take much in the way of penalties this season. Uh, so our cars are set, our strategies are set, drivers are ready, let's go to the race. Cloudy skies tonight, with the drivers now having taken position on the grid. There we see Kevin Magnussen. He won today, let's see if they can take advantage of that position. And here's Alonso, the team's second driver. A second place start for them today. They're in with a real chance. The teams are ready to go. And this is it. The Bahrain Grand Prix. And it's lights out and okay, away we, we go. And running. Good start for both our drivers. Strong start for Leclerc. Sights dropping off a little. And Leclerc just squeezes out Alonso there. Those soft tyres giving him that extra little bit of traction. Oh, and Ferrari just gained a place. Magnussen's going to sprint off into the distance, so Alonso needs to get past quickly here if he wants to stay with him. Which is what we want. We want the two of them together. Ferrari's only going to be tricky in these opening few laps with their better grip advantage. Fernando sells a move. He's going to try and outbreak around the outside. Now switches to the inside. Is he going for a lunge into the final corners? Oh, he looks at it. He just about squeezes through. And with DRS, sorry, with battery, the ERS, he can pull away. Uh, Magnussen now comfortably ahead. We're going to slow Magnussen down. We're going to push Alonso for another down. lap. Pass with an overtake. I'll try and pull away from the Ferrari onto the back of Kevin. Alonso now inside of DRS range for when that activates at the start of the next lap. 
and crucially has broken the one second gap to Claire as well. We have a spin already, it's one of the Williams cars, it's Sonoda. We've just had a spin, we can take a look now. Now we see the Williams here. The brakes on the Williams also pretty and terrible. This, yes, this is where they spun out. Okay, time to put Alonso into harvest mode. Turn his tyres down. And let's see if our drivers can control the gap. DRS enabled. You've got a drinking game every time Yuki does a Yuki, you have to take a drink. You could be absolutely hammered by the end of the race. <laughs> in here just to extend the gap a bit. And so it looks to the inside but I don't think it's going to get through. Right, Kevin's got him covered. Leclerc coming under pressure from his teammate as well. Again, Alonso just sitting in the wheel tracks there. Sainz gets past Leclerc and could now be into DRS range. So it looks as though our sprint away from the Ferraris is already unbroken, but not overly concerned. Uh, it means I can just sit back and let Alonso charge properly now. They've got the soft tyres, they will start to drop back again in about eight to ten laps. Right, let's have a look at the new order. So, uh, it's pass one and two, Ferrari three and four, Red Bull five and six, Bottas and seventh, the first of the Alphas. Hamilton 8th, Gasly 9th, Albon up to 10th, Ocon 11th, Russell has had a bad start, he's down to 12th, uh, Vettel 13th, 14th to 15th for McLaren, uh, 16th for Stroll, 17th for Latifi, uh, Schumacher, then Joe, and then Sonoda. Sainz now looking a little feisty on the back of the Alonso here. through is he or oh, he might do is he gonna get both cars he has a look he gets past Alonso Magnussen chops his nose off but he's just got the traction uh, to uh, accelerate past Alonso there yeah mate I don't have that pace uh, you don't have that pace right now but that's only because you're in, you're in uh, charge mode the race position. as soon as you go into neutral you'll be fine see Sainz making a move past Magnussen here. He's going for it. 
and gets it. Sykes moves into the lead. We've got Leclerc having a look at the side of Alonso. So at the moment you have P2. At the moment P2. Oh, and Ferrari just gained a place. Uh, put Magnussen into charge mode now. And charge button on. Leclerc now having a look at the inside of Alonso. Can't quite make the move. Top seven are breaking away for the rest of the field. There's a three-second gap now between Bottas and Hamilton, who's just moved back past Gasly. Is that a new race position for Haas? Magnussen retakes the lead. All those sides will probably get him on the inside here. And does. Almost fully charged the battery now on Alonso's car. Magnussen is almost fully charged as well. We'll turn their charge off. Towards the end of the lap. Magnussen makes another move on Sainz and retakes the lead. And you are doing a good job. Pass with an overtake there. Button off. Yeah, I'm copy. Okay, so now the pace begins and Alonso moves up into second. He out breaks his teammate, but his teammate is going to drive. Magnussen holds on to second, but only just. Both of them looking to try and find a way past sights here. Magnussen makes it. Alonso can't quite get tucked yes, back into you the. You are doing a good job. Keep doing the same. Proceed. And now that they're both fully charged, I'm actually going to drop their tyre pace down just a little. Just to protect the engine a little bit. This is, should theoretically be a relatively comfortable race for us, so we want to put as little stress on the engine as possible. What I've traditionally done in my playthroughs, at least in the first season, is put in new engines at Miami, or if not Miami, the last name, depending on when my upgrade drops. Uh, this season, I want to try and wait till Baku, if at all possible, before I change the engine. So that is going to mean looking after the engine in the races. But seeing as we are the fastest car right now, and we have got a significant upgrade package coming for Miami and then Barcelona as well. We should be able to maintain that, that speed advantage that we have, especially in the corners. Keep doing the same. And, uh, and save some wear and tear on the engines so that we can keep this first engine going and competitive for longer. And yeah, we're, we're scrapping back and forth for these top four places right now, but we're on a completely uh, slower grade of compound tyres. We're on medium compound. So the Ferrari's on hard right now, and even so, we are still right up there. Yeah, we're not dropping you know, too far off, we're not you know, falling out of DRS range. Yeah, we're actively making moves, even with this protected engine mode.
the other side effect of that is that we also protect the tyres slightly, which means we should have better pace at the end of the stint than we would normally have. Ferrari, advance the race position! So we're going to be playing the long game uh, for the first few races. We could just sprint off into the distance, um, but as I said, we want to try and uh, reduce the amount of energy penalties we take this year. to about lap 14, lap 15, I'll probably break away from the uh, Ferraris a little bit, because I'll have considerably more grip than them at that point, and I don't want to drag them with me. Let's take a look at the tyres as they are right now. Uh, we are the only two on medium tyres, and you can see now we have a significant grip advantage already. How are you doing, uh, Tony? Good to see and then they shouldn't be able to stay with us. I've seen the Platinum uh, DLC expansion so far this soon. I've seen it. Um, I'm considering picking up a copy when it's on sale, uh, which will probably be Christmas New Year sale. Right now, I need to uh, renew my PlayStation Plus. That runs out in uh, about a week, I think. I think it runs out on um, the 22nd, which is... Yeah, I don't have Final Sim at all. I, I didn't pick up a copy of, the, of this of the latest iteration. I've been uh, umming and ahhing about picking it up. Like I said, I'll probably wait until the whole package you now the Platinum version's on sale.
We're not going to break away from the Ferraris until so we need to push. about halfway around the lap, Got I think. They'll stay with us through the first two DRS zones. But after that, we should hopefully be able to pull away from them through the mid-section, through section two. I know um, Black Friday, which I think is this Friday, isn't it? Black Friday. Um, uh, there will be discounted PlayStation Plus memberships again, 25% off, I think. I'm just sticking with the uh, Essentials tab, I'm not upgrading to extra. But if we can get an overtake here, ah, we can't, damn it. If we got that overtake, we might have been able to uh, break away. We might have to sprint for another lap here. second as we cross the line. Yes we did. Science's rear wing is not open. Of course Leclerc got the overtake. He might close up on the braking. Still gonna push. Or at least another couple of corners. Claire's wing is closed, so we have broken away from the Ferraris. Okay, just get one more DRS zone out of the way. Almost out of battery, so I've got to be careful here. There we go, we get the DRS overtake, excellent. Right. Gaps up to two seconds now. Good stuff, the Ferrari should drop off. We're gonna slow the pace back down again. I'm gonna wait uh, until they pit before I start charging. Go on the risk of getting back in before they make their pit stops. Seventh and eighth is up to ten and a half seconds now. Uh, Gasly running eighth, Albon ninth. Albon running tenth, Hamilton already takes him. It's a bit of a train actually running from eighth. We've got uh, Gasly, then Hamilton, Albon, Ocon, Vettel, Russell, Norris, Stroll, and Ricardo. All the train from eighth down to sixteenth. And then a big gap uh, of fourteen seconds to make Schumacher. Uh, who's about a second and a half ahead of a battle between Latifi and Joe. Sonoda all on his own, six and a half seconds further back.
So the big question now is what tyres are the front runners going to go on to? Because they started on new softs, whereas the midfield started on new softs. So are they going to go on to hards or are they going to go on to medium? We're only a few laps away from finding out. My guess is it'll be a mixture. Some will go hard, some will go medium. Whichever driver picks first for their team is going to go on to hards, and then the second driver may stay out an extra lap or two and go medium. Over my educated guess. They should start to close up on us a little bit once they've made their stops because they'll be on fresh rubber and we'll still be on these mediums, but we will then be going soft, soft to the end, so we will have a definite pace and grip advantage over them for the second half of the race. Oh, we have a lock-up. Who's locked up? Sounds like someone's locked hey, up. Let's take a closer look. So this was the Aston Martin. They've locked up, but that could have been much worse. Okay, that's going to drop him uh, about a second and a half behind uh, his teammate, but uh, still four seconds clear of Yuki. It's going to be a, a, a slow season for Yuki. I'm surprised he hasn't caught back up a little bit. And there we go, first pit stops, Bottas, Sainz and Perez. Sorry, uh, the snap and all diving into the pits. Hard tyres for both Perez and Seitz. Uh, Bottas, what's he going on to? Gasly's coming into the pits as well. Gasly is also going for softs. Verstappen gets out ahead of Seitz. Seitz getting held in the pit lane there. There's Bottas. Gasly's on hard tyres. Ricardo has also gone for hard tyres. Interesting. More hard tyre runners than I was expecting there. And Yuki comes into the pits from last place. This might actually help him close up on the cars in front of him if he gets a couple of laps on fresher rubber. And he is also going for hard tyres. So, back to the front. Uh, we have... Um, our two drivers within a couple of tenths of each other still swapping positions back and forth. Four seconds now to Perez in third. Uh, Leclerc fourth right behind him. And a 12 second gap to Albon who leads from Hamilton who's just overtaken him. So Hamilton 12 seconds back who leads from Albon, Ocon, Vettel, Russell, Norris, Stroll. That is the train from uh, fifth to 11th. Uh, Verstappen is six seconds behind that queue of traffic but they are going to be jumping out of the way of him. And there goes Perez into the pits. Is Perez going for hards as well? Or is he going mediums? Leclerc has stayed out, so I'm guessing Leclerc's going to go mediums. Perez is going for hards. Norris and Stroll are in. Let's see where does Perez come out. Perez is going to come out just behind Verstappen. But crucially for him, he gets ahead of Sainz. Norris has also gone hard tyres, so Stroll. Latifi and uh, Joe are in. Are they going for, for hard tyres? I see somebody, I see a few drivers there lining up for mediums. One of the McLarens is there, so Mercedes is coming in at the end of the lap for medium tyres. Oh, it's a slow stop for... Latifi, he was held because Joe got a bit a quicker stop. So Latifi drops through the pits. Who's pitting? Is it Hamilton or is it Russell? I think it's going to be Hamilton. 
who's fighting side by side with Ocon here. Albon's having a great race. On his return to Red Bull. Kind of. Leclerc into the pits. Okay, is Leclerc going hard or is he going mediums? He's going hard as well. Albon into the pits. And so is Hamilton and Ocon. Hamilton goes mediums. Ocon is also going for mediums. Albon has also gone for mediums. So uh, we're seeing the first drivers, you know, spurn the hard tyres and go for the medium tyres. This will give them a bit of a pace advantage. Uh, we have a lock-up somewhere. The Schumacher pits. Oh, we've got a safety car. Is it full or virtual? It's virtual. So, virtual safety car deployed. Virtual safety car deployed. That's a virtual <laughs> safety car. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, let's take a look at our strategy here. Let's go for another set of mediums. It's a little bit too early to go soft. So uh, let's bring them both in for mediums. Confirm. So box now. Box, speed confirm. Box, box. This will break our strategies. So we can rework those. Do that now. There we go. And we'll take advantage of this virtual safety car to save probably about nine seconds and our pit stops. Uh, we can also start charging up our, our batteries at the same time. It will be a double stack, so we'll probably have to push Alonso to get onto the back of Kevin again. But we should now, button at least on. with Magnussen come out, on. still in the If Vettel and Russell pit, which they might well do, because they haven't pit yet. Yeah, there's the mechanics, the Mercedes uh, mechanics out for, for Russell. He's going to be coming in. I think that's the Alpha Tauri, uh, sorry, Alpha Romeo mechanic behind us. Yeah, Vettel is in. Mangston's going to stay in first. Can Alonso get out in second? It's going to be close. So Sebastian just beat it now. Now he drops in behind the two Red Bulls. DRS enabled, DRS enabled. So we do have uh, some work to do to get Alonso back in touch with Magnussen. Obviously uh, having to wait in the pits like that has dropped him several seconds behind Magnussen. But he has uh, got a nice little DRS train to help him charge his battery up. Magnussen does not. And of course he has faster compound of tyres than the two Red Bulls. So sprinting him away from the Red Bulls once he gets charged up will not be a problem. And we've had another lockup. It's another lockup for Mick Schumacher. And that drops into the back. Yuki is no longer last.
Okay, we're going to ride on board with Alonso as we try and pass these two Red Bulls. As we dive up the inside of uh, Verstappen. Now we look to line up a move on Perez. Pass with an overtake there. And there is the overtake, and we are immediately going to go into full deployment and sprint. To catch up to the back of Magnussen. position for Haas. So Ferrari, the big losers in that round of pit stops, uh, they have both dropped behind both of the Red Bulls. They are still within striking distance. Pushing hard. He should hopefully be on to the back of Magnussen by the DRSA. in DRS range. Let's put him into harvest mode. Let's turn off harvest for Magnuson. And charge button off. Copy. What's this I hear about Benotto sacking the other day? There's a rumour going around that uh, Benotto's getting sacked. Um, Ferrari have come out and said that it's not happening. But, you know, it's possible. I think if, you know, if Ferrari have learned anything, it's that they should stand by Benotto. I mean, they need to make some changes in the strategy department, there is no denying that, but in terms of managing the team and getting the most out of the car, uh, in terms of developing you know, and creating a very good car, uh, Binotto turned the team's fortunes around significantly. You know, everything improved about their car, the arrows, the engine. Um, made them a very competitive package at the start of the season but they just they ran out of money and, you know, they hit the cost cap and they weren't able to continue developing the car they were planning on having a late season push development wise which is why they didn't do a lot of development at the start of the season but then they hit the cost cap and as costs went up and just couldn't develop the car anymore I think Red Bull might breach the cost cap again this year So one more thing about Red Bull breaking the cost cap for last season. The teams were given the opportunity in 2020 to do a dry run uh, with, you know, for cost capping. You know, to, you know, submit paperwork. It wouldn't be an official cost cap season, but they were all given. All teams were given the opportunity to do a dry run with their financing and. Uh, and get used to the way the cost cap works. Get the process down, get it all dialed in. Red Bull decided that they didn't want to do that. Uh, and then they turned around and, and claimed ignorance when they incorrectly filed their paperwork. 
They had a whole season as a practice run and they chose not to do it. They've got no one to blame but themselves. Flag in sector three. It's one of the Williams, I think. Or is it Bottas? We just had a car no, it's Schumacher. Wide. Here's the replay. Right, watch this. There's Schumacher. Well, I don't know what they were thinking ah, it wasn't there. That bad. Just kicked up a little bit of dust.
I am new to the game. Yes. <laughs> uh, whoops. I'm not sure how long I've been muted. So I'm guessing a little while. Uh, I was just saying, um, 36 degrees in the summer for, for Patkins. Yeah, it was around 40 degrees uh, for me here in, in Nottingham. Yeah, it was pretty brutal this summer. And uh, I talked to a lot of Americans uh, on a regular basis. Uh, it's, it's quite funny that one of the things I used to hear all the time, not so much anymore, but I used to hear all the time was yeah, 40 degrees, 90, 95 degrees. It's not that hot. No, you know, it's like that every, every day in the summer for us. And, it's, and I always turn around and say, it's not how hot it is, it's how much hotter than it normally is that makes the difference. When you consider that a British summer, you're talking high 20s, to so then suddenly be 12 to 15 degrees higher than that, that's a lot. It would be the equivalent of someone who normally has a 90 degree, 90 degree day in, in America, waking up and it's 110. Yeah, it hits you, then you get that big jump in temperature. Right, uh, another look at the tyres. Uh, we've looked after our tyres to such an extent that they are now actually slightly better than the hard tyres behind us. That, which is excellent. And we're continuing to eke out the gap. It's now up to eight and a half seconds over the Red Bulls. Eight seconds. Uh, and the Ferrari is getting involved now. You see uh, Leclerc trying to force his way past Perez. And does so. So, is this the start of Leclerc pushing? He's immediately lining up a move on Verstappen and makes that move, makes it stick. Can Verstappen fight back? He has the DRS open. He can't get through, not yet. halfway through this stint another 11 laps to go till we pit and this is a very comfortable race for us indeed I'm even going to drop down the pace a little bit more just save on that wear engine wear as much as possible And we can kind of get away with doing this by the fact that we're running a faster compound of tyre. So we should hold the gap at around 8 seconds or maybe lose a tenth or two a lap. But our wear will be significantly better. we look further down the grid you can see Albon and Russell have now almost caught Bottas just one and a half seconds back oh god yeah I can imagine working greenhouses in the middle of that yeah, that must have been horrific I don't think we're going Will I not have to pit again for another compound? Yes, yes I will, but so is everyone else. 
everyone else is getting. It's, this is a, a two-stop race for everyone. No one's going to the end. So uh, the whole field's going to pit for softs at the end. This is a, a soft, medium, soft, or a soft, hard, soft you know, race. We've gone. We were going to go medium, soft, soft, but we uh, we came in early because of the virtual safety car to go to the sort of medium. And uh, you know, despite turning our pace down, we pulled out another second from that previous lap. So right now we have the safe gap. Bot has, has been reeled in. Have they got the tyres to do anything about it? Yeah, they do. It's just, uh, you know, every now and again I forget to unpress it again. Because uh, I'm using a, a, a standalone microphone. And it doesn't have a mute button on it, but I can still mute it while I'm using the camera. I love the fact that I've got a cheap mic without the built-in mute button can be controlled from the panel. The other thing I really like about the mute button on the DualSense is that if you hold the button down it mutes all the audio, so it mutes the game audio as well. So uh, if you're in the middle of a conversation with someone, uh, you, know, you can hold the button down and it mutes everything, you know, mutes, uh, mutes the game, uh, mutes, maybe, you know, mutes, mutes your mind, you just don't have anything coming through your headset, and then you can unmute by just uh, a single press and press. Watching this battle, our two drivers are still swapping positions back and forth, and the gap is now up to 10 seconds. To Nearly 10 seconds, nine and a half seconds. Can you take the gap between Alonso and Max in the future? Even running with this you know, slowest tyre pace, we are still eking out the gap, and now it is 10 seconds. PlayStation controller is too big. Uh, the Xbox controller has always been bigger, hasn't it? It's certainly been fatter. I mean, the last two PlayStation controllers have gotten um, bigger than the previous iteration, so very little changed in uh, at all uh, from the original style of uh, 
Dual, uh, well, not even, it wasn't even the DualShock, it was just the controller. Uh, and then, then they added uh, the sticks in the PlayStation 1 version. And I think that's when they added uh, Rumble Motors as well in the game of DualShock 1. And yeah, the DualShock 2, which was, I mentioned, the identical on the PS2 and the PS3. And then the DualShock 4 was the first one that was increased in size. Because of the uh, the touchpad and the, the bigger motors, etc., and they made it a little bit more ergonomic, and it was a nicer controller. Uh, and then they made it slightly bigger again with this latest iteration. But I think I think in terms of size, I mean the Xbox controller is chunkier. And, um, Which is why it maybe feels a bit small. It might just be down to the way that the, uh, the sticks are configured on that pad as well. Alright, Leclerc has punched through into third place. Uh, let's have a rundown from the top of the grid. So we have Magnuson currently leading from Alonso by half a second for those who keep switching position every lap. Uh, if we go down the order, we have Leclerc leading a train of four cars in third place from Perez, Verstappen and Sainz. They are 10 to 11 seconds back from our two Haas drivers. Then another 11 seconds back is Russell heading a train of himself, Bottas, Alonso, Hamilton, Gasly. Uh, from all the way down to 11th place and then 5 seconds back in 12th is Verstappen not Verstappen, sorry, Vettel who leads off on um, they are just over a second ahead of Norris who is just about hanging on to the back of them so we've got a little train of Ocon, Vettel, Norris and Stroll and then 6 seconds back is Ricardo, all on his own completely isolated at the moment and then it's a big gap back to Joe, 42 seconds further back um, to, to Joe, who is ahead of a three-way fight by about one and a half seconds between Sonoda, Mick Schumacher and Latifi. It's lap 36 of 57, 21 more laps to go after this one. And we are comfortably controlling this race. The gap now 11 and a half seconds. With the car that we've built this season, uh, combined with our very strong driver lineup of Alonso and Magnussen. This season, at least the first half of the season, is going to be very strong for us. I do think we may trail a little bit um, in development to Ferrari and Red Bull. And they will come back at us a bit. It depends how much we put into this year's car. And we won't really know that until we get the regulation vote from the moment to Australia. Can I turn up the, uh, the mic or turn down the game sound? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, let me... Uh let me do that in the settings. Okay, how's that? Is that any better? I know it can be a bit tricky sometimes with the, the close-up loud pass-bys bike like that, but uh, I can turn it down a little bit more if you need.
Trucker kind of thinks that the Xbox controller sits better in his hands. I think it's what you're used to. I've never really gone on with the Xbox controllers, but then I've never owned an Xbox, so um, I've always used uh, a controller on the odd occasions when I have played on one uh, that's been someone else's. And it's, it's never been, I've never owned one, so I've never had that time to get used to the controller um, over an extended period. I remember picking up the dual set the dual shock 4 for the first time and it felt weird because it was bigger and heavier uh, than the uh, dual shock 3 which hadn't you know had been pretty much the same iteration of that design for the previous three generations of console so uh, nothing had really changed and then you get this new pad and it just felt a bit weird but after about two weeks of using the dual set of DualShock 4 for the first time when I got my PS4 I fired up the PS3 picked up my DualShock 3 and it felt so light and flimsy and small I couldn't use it and it felt horrible I think it's just what you get used to I think if you spend equal time with a PlayStation controller and an Xbox controller you wouldn't have an issue but if you predominantly use one over the other you're going to notice it when you pick the other one up I mean, that's just a general rule. Obviously, some people, you know, depending on their hand shape or size, do just find that one style of pad suits their hand size better. I don't know that people with big hands have generally found the Xbox controllers better over the years because those controllers were chunkier. But with the newer versions of the PlayStation controllers having gotten bigger, I think that's less of an issue now for, for a lot of people. It's not as polarizing as it used to be. I don't have an Xbox, so all I have is PlayStation, so I just used the PlayStation controls. Right, we have some pit stops. Uh, Hamilton in the pits, along with Stroll and Norris, and they are the first to go on to... Oh, Hamilton's gone on to soft tyres. Norris has gone on to mediums, and so has Stroll. Interesting. Now, are they new tyres for Hamilton? No, they're not. So Hamilton's gone on to used softs, which I think, you know, anyone who puts softs on, they're going to be used. But he's gone on to them very early. I'm not sure whether those tyres are going to serve him well. Maybe he's trying to make up some ground and undercut the guys in front of him. Joe and Latifi now coming into the pits as well. Let's see what they go on to. Are they going soft or medium? They should have new softs. Oh, mediums for Joe. And mediums for Latifi. So Hamilton, the only one so far who's gone out on softs. Anyone who puts on mediums is going to have a new set. Oh, and they come out right in front of the Ferraris and the Red Bulls. That could slow them down. That was a bit clunky for the uh, for the race leaders going through there. Oh, someone locked up. I thought that was Alonso for a second. Seems it wasn't. Been a lock up. It was Let's Bottas. Now let's watch this. The Alfa Romeo involved in this one. And this, yes, there, that's the lockup. Okay, straight on at turn one. That's going to be a big blow to the team. Will they be able to recover? We'll see. Uh, has Bottas damaged his car? No, he has not. 
we are now getting into our pit window with brand new softs available for us let's see the gap is 13 and a half seconds Okay, we're into the pit window. I'm gonna box Alonso first. And we're gonna box Magnussen for the lap afterwards. See, we've almost saved all that fuel, just a little bit left. And we have more pit stops. Sainz has gone on to soft tyres. Albon puts on softs, gets held in the pit lane. Tires for Ocon. Russell has put on softs as well. Those two are just about going to get out ahead of Ricardo. And a yellow flag in sector two. Someone had a spin. Sounds like a spin. Let's Joe. take a look at the replay. Let's take another look. There we have Joe. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. The car's just gone. So now coming round to uh, go into the pits. There we go, we've got uh, Mick Schumacher pitting in front of us. Hamilton currently the owner of the fastest lap. We will take that from him. Is rubbish 3.2 seconds, not great. And we come out in fifth place, clear of Gasly by eight seconds, seven and a half seconds behind uh, Sainz, uh, sorry, not Sainz, sorry, Leclerc, Perez, and Verstappen. Each one of our drivers one lap to set a fastest lap. Uh, yellow flag in sector two. It's getting a bit congested in front of uh, Alonso here. They've gone wide. Latifi running wide. We're gonna have to wait a couple of laps, I think, before we try and go for the fastest lap. Magnussen into the pits. And we can see a lot of other uh, pit crews now also out with soft tyres in hand. Perez is in. 3.3 seconds, not bad. Alonso has gone through, and this is going to be Alonso's uh, fastest lap attempt. He might well trip over some of this traffic in front of him, though. 
Kathleen Bottas also in for soft tyres. Traffic peels out of the way. Alonso does not get DRS. But he does get right onto the back of the snap and I think Magnussen's gonna take the fastest lap because it's not been a very clean lap here for Alonso. I might give him one more lap. It wasn't very clean. Max pitting this lap. Yes, he is. Okay, so here we go. A clean run. Let's do a clean run for Kevin as well. Yellow flag in sector one. Is that a lock up? Latifi locking up again. Sainz has taken fastest lap. I knew that wouldn't have been enough. Alonso, purple, purple. Because we gave uh, Alonso two laps, we will give Kevin two laps as well. Plus, it'll help him close the gap back up to Alonso. So, there we go. New fastest lap, a 132.8. Considerably faster. Can Kevin top that himself? He's slower than Alonso in the first sector. down to this final sector. And he can't improve, so he did a 133.2. And just a reminder on your eyes. Copy that. We should slow down. Copy. Let's uh, make sure both our drivers get their fuel positive now. Uh, so, uh, the fastest lap. Uh, Magnuson did a 133.2. The fastest lap, a 132.8. So half a second difference between the two drivers there. Okay. 
Okay, we're going to recharge the batteries as well, just in case there is an elite safety car that closes the field up. And charge button on. Copy that. And these two go back to swapping positions with each other. decide it themselves on no track. No lift off needed. You are doing a good job. We're not going to favour either driver. Thirteen and a half seconds, nearly fourteen seconds. Gap. Oh, there we go, fourteen seconds. Back to Sykes, who has broken clear of Perez. Something has gone on. I think it must be getting through this traffic. Perez has broken free. And then there's a four, five-second gap back to Perez. You can see Leclerc having to get through uh, the Williams there. That is Sonoda. No, that's the TP. Sonoda is a little bit further up the field, uh, further up the track. Uh, and then Verstappen also having to fight through the traffic. Hamilton has caught right up to the back, thanks to that early pit stop. But has he now got enough tyres left to uh, affect the pass or even stay with the Red Bulls? That only pit stop for him has, has paid dividends here. He's leapfrogged well clear of Russell, Albon, Gasly. They've all broken up. Norris has gone to the back of Gasly. So Gasly's a big loser in, uh, in that round of pit stops there. His tyres now 49% against the staff and 67. And if his tyres will drop off, if he's not careful, he will drop out of DRS. And then the Red Bull will pull away. See if he can hunt down his teammate. It 
looks like Hamilton is now struggling to stay in the DRS range. I think another couple of laps and he's going to start getting dropped by the snapping. Leclerc has got past Perez. Four seconds to sights. Can he close that gap? Perez will go with him. And we need some lift and go for tire temps. Copy. Oh, and Hamilton is actually going to make the move. Hamilton gets past the snap, and I didn't think he would be able to do that. I thought he would uh, fail and would get dropped in this sequence of corners, but he's actually got through. Good man. is closing down sights he's got the gap down to three seconds he's also looking to break away from Perez I don't think Perez is going to get the DRS here he doesn't so Leclerc has broken away from Perez the Red Bulls look like they are going to finish fifth and sixth now Verstappen back past Hamilton and it's just surely a matter of time before those, those uh, tyres on the Mercedes fall off. Any point saving the tyres now other than uh, saving the engine? Um, yeah, again, it's just it's saving wear and tear on the engine. Um, this pace setting, uh, as you can see, um, the pace commands there on this lower setting it also reduces the wear on the engine as well as the wear and temperature of the tyres so uh, you know those are positive benefits uh, and then negative benefits we have less braking force um, but that's because we're going slower uh, less acceleration out of corners because we're not pushing the tyres as hard and less cornering speed but we're still lapping faster than sides so it's not an issue we're just protecting our engines take a look at our engine wear rate the engine's still at 91 percent 94 percent on the ERS gearbox has taken a little bit of a hit but they always do but yeah we've still got a 90 percent engine at the end of this race which is good we've saved uh, a few percentage points of wear on it and we kind of had to in a way because we worked it really hard in practice um, by running it you know all session, every session, to get that uh, car knowledge up as quickly as possible. I'm going to drop the fuel modes down as well, just to take a little bit more pace out of the car. We can just cruise for these last six laps. between the two Ferraris. 
player closing down again and taking another second out of his teammate. Flapping eight tenths of a second quicker. Five laps to go. Yellow flag in sector two. That is one of the Williams. I think there's been a lockup. It's Latifi. Well, we can take a look now. Now we see the Williams here. Well, they've lost it. They've locked up. And that was a bitter blow for the team. And it may have really hurt their overall chances. I did wonder if we did this Xbox tonight. There we go. That's them blocked and reported. Which one of our drivers is world champion this year? Well, you'll just have to watch every race and find out. Well, I suppose technically you could just watch the last race of the season and find out, but where's the fun in that? Leclerc has gained another half a second. Not quite in DRS range yet, but he is getting closer. Sixteen seconds on science now. Two Red Bulls still two seconds apart. Hamilton's still hanging on to the back of the snap, and I am very surprised by that. I thought those tyres would have given up by now. He's actually making the pass. Alonso moves back past Magnussen. They go side by side through the, the tight corner there. Magnussen retaking the lead. Alonso is getting the fastest lap, but who's getting the win? Leclerc putting Sainz under pressure. He's going to make the pass. And Leclerc has fought from four or five seconds down on his teammate. If not further, he was behind the Red Bulls, I think, at one point. He's uh, broken past them both, past Sainz, and is now into third place. Just two laps and a couple of corners to go.
then it will be two laps. Magnuson still holding on. Sainz hanging with uh, Leclerc still, and H Hamilton has now been dropped by two seconds to Verstappen, who's caught back up to Perez. No, no, no doubt in small part to, to the uh, leapfrogging of Hamilton and Verstappen in the DRS zones. So we've got fights up and down the top six here. Which of the two Haas cars will come out on top? Which of the two Ferraris will come out on top? And which of the two Red Bulls will come out on top? Albon is still hanging on to ninth place. Gasly is a second and a half behind him. I don't think he's going to catch him in time. Alonso moves through into the lead. You know what they say, trucker, everything's bigger in Texas, including the DLCs. All right, here we go. Final lap of the Grand Prix. Who's going to win, Alonso or Magnussen? Magnussen's going to go up the inside. No, the outside. on board with Magnussen now we watch Alonso coming back at him with more DRS of his own these two take each other out now I'm going to be pissed <laughs> I think Magnussen is just going to hold off Alonso. He didn't manage to get the DRS pass. I don't think he's going to do it. If I threw on some ERS, he would, but we did say we're not going to interfere. We're going to let them fight it out themselves on track. I think Magnussen's going to take the win, but Alonso will take the fastest lap. So, honours shared in some respects. It'll be a 1 2 for the team. And because they're both drivers with actual faces. <laughs> <laughs> we will see them both on the podium. There we go. Alonso running wide in the final turn, just trying to catch up. And there we go. And check it, flag. Well done, everyone. And Magnussen takes home the win. Let's take a closer look. And Kevin Magnussen picks up the win. Well, it was never certain. But if anything, that must make the victory taste even sweeter. Leclerc gets ahead of Sainz. Verstappen does get ahead of Perez in the end. Albon and Gasly are side by side. We've had a yellow flag incident. Oh, big lock up there. And lock up for Bottas. That's, he's dropped way off the order. Look at him now. Down in 14th place. Can Albon hold on from ninth? He can. 10th for Gasly. Norris 11th. Stroll's going to bring it home in 12th. 13th for Ocon. Bottas a disappointing 14th. He was running in seventh for so long at the start of the season, start of this race. His race really did fall apart. And Vettel, 15th, a long way down as well. There's a point of showing from him. Ricardo, a long way back in 16th. And then it's Joe, Sonoda, Schumacher, and Latifi bringing up the back of the field.
Kevin Magnussen showing us how it's done. A great result. A spot on the podium is exactly what the team deserved, and they got it. Well, the Dane had a very impressive race, really delivering when the pressure was on. Alongside them, of course, the other two talented drivers completing today's podium lineup. This is a good result for Haas, more than enough to satisfy the whole team. I wouldn't be surprised if the team's performance today won them a lot of new fans. After an intense weekend, the team ends in first place in the constructor standings. The teams now look ahead to the next round, where they'll duel it out in the sand dunes of Saudi Arabia. So there we go. What a great race. Uh, very comfortable race in the end for us there. Uh, a lovely 1-2 as our first team 1-2. Uh, closest we got was a 1-3 in the first season, I think. Um, yeah, great result. Fastest lap for Fernando. Uh, pole and the win for Magnussen. So six points to the gap at the top of the driver's standings between our two. Uh, Leclerc third, Sainz fourth, Verstappen fifth, Perez sixth. Then Hamilton, Russell, Albon and Gasly rounding out the scorers. In the Constructors' Championship, Haas taking maximum points, uh, 44 points. Ferrari second with 27, Red Bull third, uh, third with 18, Mercedes fourth with 10, Alpha Tauri uh, taking two points in fifth and Alpine in sixth. A very disappointing showing from Alfa Romeo there. They were on for some decent points at the start of the, of the Grand Prix and they just fell away very badly. They're not quite sure what happened to them there. So, uh, no points earned for our drivers. We do have a driver payout bonus for Kevin Magnussen for his uh, sixth place or higher finish. He's going to be paying, getting a payout, payout pretty much every race this season, I think. Probably should have tried to go for that higher wage and get rid of that bonus. Uh, we made our sponsor objectives. Uh, so uh, uh, achieved all of the incentives that were set for us and we achieved the guarantees as well and of course we made progress on both of the streaks right Let's have a look at our inbox. Uh, Javier has uh, a little bit of feedback for us, recommends that we improve Fernando's cornering ability. Uh, it's pretty good. It's not the uh, biggest concern right now. Uh, the board are very, very happy uh, with the one, two, as they should be. There is the breakdown. Kevin Magnussen claimed the chequered flag at the Bahrain Grand Prix last weekend, finishing ahead of Fernando Alonso and Charles Leclerc, who shared the podium. After qualifying P1 on Saturday, Kevin Magnussen was able to maintain their lead and secure a fantastic victory. The success of Kevin Magnussen this weekend has allowed them to soar into the lead of the Drivers' Championship. Currently, Magnussen is leading the championship with a healthy 25 points. Fernando followed with P2 with 19, ahead of Charles Leclerc in P3 with 15. Uh, everyone talking about Haas as they exceed everyone's expectations, currently placing P1 in the Constructors with 44 points. That uh, put Haas, puts Haas on top of the championship, followed by Ferrari with 27 points and Red Bull with 18. Despite some bold moves and close racing from the world's fastest drivers, it was fortunately a race free of retirements. So, uh, we move 
towards the next Grand Prix. We might still have a point with Logan. Not quite. Uh, he is going to get one at the end of the next race, though, I think. Uh, we are going to get a point for Magnussen next race. Uh, and we're a couple of races away, well, a few races away for Fernando. Uh, it's going to be a while before he gets his next point. Uh, but yes, we will be working on getting his cornering up as well. Let's take a quick look at our staff. Uh, Resta is a couple of weeks away from a new point. Uh, Mr. Grumpy, Mr. Murphy is a few weeks away. Our two engineers, uh, Pedro, will get one in a couple of weeks. We're already up to OK Affinity uh, with uh, Fernando. And uh, Javier is already up to OK Affinity. Oh, good Affinity uh, already with, uh, with Kevin. He does have that, have that higher communication. And the win will help as well, I think. Uh, how long till he gets his point? Oh, he's way off. He's way off his next point. Pedro is going to get one very, very soon. Our pit crew have improved a little bit, but they're still pretty rubbish across the board. Uh, we've got a lot of work to try and get them improved. It's going to take many years before we get a, a, a really strong pit crew. Uh, in terms of facilities, let's have a look. Um, is there anything close to breaking? Yes, the car park test center is close to breaking. Uh, that's going to cost uh, 8 million to max out or 2.3 to refurb. Uh, we'll have to sit on that one for a while, I think. Uh, staff facilities, our race simulator is going to need a refurb soon and that's going to cost us 4.5 mil. That's not cheap. Uh, we could go ahead and do a team hub. Uh, no, we don't have the money for that yet. Uh, scouting is almost ready. Six days to go. Operationally, we are ignoring the boardroom and the hospitality for a while. Weather center, at some point, uh, we will look to upgrade. We'll get um, some of these car upgrades out of the way first. We've recently refurbished the helipad to keep the sponsors nice and happy. Uh, so that's going to be okay for a while. Memorabilia room is about to break. Um, we could upgrade it, but I'll, I'll probably hold off on that for a while as well. And the tour center is a few weeks away from needing to be touched up as well. As far as the board goes, um, despite a little bit of debt, and it is just a little bit of debt, they are still satisfied with finances. We only went 260 grand over the uh, monthly budget. Uh, and we had no debt in the uh, five months before that and we'll have no debt for a while going after that either so that should stay nice and satisfied uh, objectives um, we've already completed um, our season objective last year and our long-term objective they've obviously reset and you can see now our season objective has changed from sixth to third so we need to make sure we finish at least third in the Constructors' Championship. We're well on course for doing that, uh, given our current pace. But as I say, I, I do expect Ferrari and Red Bull to come back at us a bit uh, as the season progresses. You know, They are obviously very, very fast and very, very good at developing their cars. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how, um, how well we can maintain our advantage. We are in a stronger position with this team than we are with the Williams team, so hopefully it should be easier for us to, to stay in front of the, uh, the chasing pack. Uh, spare chassis is done. We have some scouting available as well. Let's go ahead and uh, scout the next pair of engineers. and we have arrived in Saudi Arabia so that is it for tonight a long stream uh, we started half an hour early uh, because we had all that pre-season stuff to deal with uh, and it took us an hour to get to uh, the race weekend 
uh, but that went through uh, the changing of driver lineups and staffing lineups, the developing of the car in, in the off season, uh, and then uh, getting everything up and ready uh, for the first practice sessions as well. So uh, a bit of a long start to that episode, but it's always going to be like that at the end uh, or at the start of a new season. Uh, because we do have that three month period four months really if you count uh, the end of uh, you know, if you count December from the previous year as well so that's it for tonight uh, we'll be back with more Haas tomorrow where we take on the Jetta Corniche uh, and then Friday I will probably be throwing up um, a random Mercedes race uh, and then uh, we'll be back with Williams on Monday so uh, I'll see you at the usual time of 10.30 tomorrow night. Uh, that's it from me. Thanks for watching. I am Jim Bob, and I'll be back with some more F1 Manager very soon. <laughs>